You know what I got you playing today? What are we playing today? Playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Yay! The original Sonic game. <laughs> Tyler hasn't had much experience growing up with retro games, although he owns some. So in Coffee and Pie, I will have Tyler play games of my choosing. His goal is to finish or play to his fill. Along the way, I'll be giving tips or other information regarding the history or trivia of the game featured. Tyler can ask me any questions he wants, and I'll do my best to answer them. There will be jokes, mistakes, and obscure references. Let's get started. What I want you to do today is I want you to try to get as far as you can. As far as I can? As far as you can. <laughs> All right. if, you, if you beat the game, even better. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to. Wait, are you a quitter? <laughs> <laughs> so I have never... I never owned, like, an old-school console when I was a kid. Uh, the first console I owned was a PS2. Okay. That was before... Not a bad console to own. No, obviously, yeah, it was a great console, but that was before. But I understand that Sonic is supposed to go fast, <laughs> which I'm not doing so hot at it. <laughs> I, I, you know, yes, he is supposed to go fast. It's, I believe, a big miscon... Not a big misconception, but there's a lot more to these levels and stages than people give it credit for. Okay. And uh, when you talk to people who have opinions about the Sonic games, they're like, yeah, just press right to get to the end of the level. Yes, that's, you know... Correct, but there's there's some verticality to the game. There are, sure. there are secret things above. There are secret mm -hmm. things below. Well, and I'm I'm not I'm, like I'm not an expert in Sonic games, but I do understand that Sonic games uh, aren't. I mean, aren't they known, especially the early ones, to have like really intricate, in interesting level design yeah. and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, they are definitely. And uh, how many games were were based on like speed before Sonic? No, no, not not many. Not many. Yeah, not many. And that was one thing they took pride in, uh, uh, Sega particularly. They wanted something that was fast and splashy and cool compared to Sonic's... Or not Sonic, I'm sorry, Mario's... Sort of slower Slower, Yeah, like slower that. paced gameplay, which Mario can also go quite fast. Although, sure. marketing in the early 90s would tell you differently. Gotta go. Hey, guy, you're the first serious gamer I've seen all morning. Check this out. Brand new 16-bit Super Nintendo with Super Mario World. Wow! Oh, what's this one? Oh, this is a Sonic the Hedgehog from Sega Genesis. Hey, look at these radical colors, huh? Wow, Sonic's fast, too. No, over here. I like Genesis, and it costs a lot less. Wait, kid, that game I'll there. take Sonic and Genesis. <laughs> I knew that. Sonic the Hedgehog. More action, more speed. Sega Genesis, it's a whole lot more for less. I know there are people that may watch this that just get infuriated because it's like they grew up playing. No, 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 no. No, I mean, older audiences, maybe. But, uh, okay. But the more those with the more refined, not those with the more refined <laughs> retro tastes. Uh, Sega did very well. Sega of America specifically did mm -hmm. very well in marketing Sonic, uh, and a lot of times they did a lot of test uh, test market runs before they released the game, and according to their data, uh, uh, comparatively to the Mario games, there was about like an 80% people who liked Sonic over Mario, at least the gameplay. Because once again, one of the biggest things about Sonic was how fast he went and, and how colorful sure. the game was, which is something that, you know, um, wasn't around back then. Sega also, Sega America also leaned on the... Um, they were the antithesis of Nintendo. Okay. Um, whereas Nintendo was for everybody, Nintendo was for kids, you know, the younger audiences. Sure. Sega wanted to capture like kind of like like the, an older the the, the early teens to like older demographic. That's interesting because that's sort of what Xbox did right, when yeah. Xbox first released was they their brand sure. was more of like the <clears throat> and it kind of fit with the darker right, or like the darker construction of the actual yeah. physical console. It, it, itself. it all it also fit because Microsoft did have. Uh, a, a somewhat of a partnership with Sega when Sega started going down. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sega wanted to be the antithesis of what Nintendo was, so uh, their marketing was very cool, very in-your-face, very, um, yeah, edgy. It swept the country like a plague. Thousands of helpless teenagers trapped in a dull, drab world of colorless video games. But there is hope. Color? Introducing Game Gear from Sega, the full color portable video game system that separates the men from the boys. Game Gear from Sega. And Sega Japan hated it, actually. 
Oh, Se- Sega, okay. Sega Japan and America did not get along. Um, Is that a was Sega in Japan maybe a little more aligned with sort of the ideology, ideology and philosophy of like Nintendo? No, there was so one of the biggest things that um, it was kind of a twofold. There's definitely more to it than what I am aware of. I wasn't you know there personally myself. <laughs> of course. But Sega of America did a lot more for Sega than what Sega of Japan did in those days. Okay. As far as marketing as far as <clears throat> getting the word out about Sega and becoming popular. I guess that makes sense. And so what happened is <clears throat> Japan seemed to have this kind of like resentment and jealousy. Um, man, you, those get you. Those are getting yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, they, they started to have this like resentment and jealousy. Um, and so there were, they would do things that kind of hindered uh, Sega of America's like progress. Okay. Uh, so to speak, like either not tell them specific pieces of information, uh, deny requests for like funding for certain marketings and stuff like that. So when when Sega started to do the Sega does what Nintendo when they started actively attacking Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, Japan didn't like that because that's not how like Japan rolls. Okay. But also at the time, like a lot of market or a lot of retailers uh, were not very fond of Nintendo either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, I'm sure that probably extends to today. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that also helped Sega at the time. It was just a mixture of all the, the right place, right time, right decisions that were made. Got uh, it. Oh, the big, the big ring. Yeah, okay. the big ring. I'm assuming I'm just hitting high scores that will be legendary among the retro gaming community no. once this video releases. <laughs> no. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that was a stonewall no. <laughs> It's funny because in, in that previous level, I just, like, jumped and went sky high, and then all of a sudden the level was over. <laughs> well, well think, think about it. It's like Top Gun. Your mission is to prepare for the next mission. <laughs>
uh, was Sonic. But his name wasn't Sonic at the time. It was uh, Mr. Needle Mouse, I think it was. Needle um, Mouse. Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's a that's, literal. That's a hedgehog, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a like literal. literal. Yeah. Um, and he had like a spiked collar. He had fangs. He kind of looked he, like he was early Sonic. He was... Hmm. Okay. Sonic that looked really rough. And he had he had a human girlfriend named Madonna. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, we're not gonna get to the <laughs> end here. <laughs> There's just so many there were so many layers to that. And it just kept getting weirder and weirder as he went on. He was a hedgehog. He yeah. had a girlfriend. Yes. Who was human. Uh huh. Whose she name was, was Madonna. Yeah. Blonde. Buck, <laughs> just like, buxom. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, they sent it to uh, they sent it to you know, Japan was excited. Like, wow, this is great! And they sent it to uh-huh. Sega of America and Sega of America. Tom Kalinske at the time and his team was just like, no, <laughs> this isn't. We're not doing this. And so they they uh, they modified him just a little bit. And there was back and forth. There was pushback okay. back and forth because it's like you know, Japan's over here like you're gonna love this. And America's like, we don't. Well, here's some changes. And Japan's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> how dare you change our stuff? Sure. And so, yeah, lots of push and pull with those two companies. Uh, but eventually they came to, they named him, uh, Sega of America named him Sonic. No, Japan named him Sonic, but Sega of America came up with the more design Sonic that we know now. Like, oh, they, like they, the- they got rid of the spike collar, they got rid of the fangs. Um... There was refinement on both sides. I'm not going to say that Sega of America took all the credit for making okay. Sonic what it is. Sure. But there was continuous, continuous refinement on both sides until we got Sonic, who still kept his edginess. Because what it, what it was was Tom Kalinske. Uh, Tom Kalinske used to work and for... Just for background, who was Tom, Tom Kalinske? Tom Kalinske was uh, president of Sega of America. Okay. Uh, during so, the uh, 90s? Yes, yeah. During, during the 90s. Okay. I forgot who he took over from, but sure. uh, Sega of Japan's president at the time Nakayama got Tom Kalinske to head Sega of America and so Tom Kalinske used to work for Mattel he used to work oh, for oh okay he used to work for um, yeah he used to work for um, uh, Matchbox as well okay the, the, you know uh, Hot Wheels and so because there was a lot of crossover between like toy companies and right yes that makes sense and so what happened was Tom Kalinske knew that you can't just push out somebody and be like, this is our new mascot. Like, there has to be a reason why, like, he is a mascot. So they basically looked at um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, He-Man, all of those characters, and they were like, well, why why are they popular? It's because they have, like, relatable stories that people are interested in. They are interesting people. They're not just an image. Sega ended up taking about 40% of the market share at their height, which is unheard of. Like, of I, the global? Yes. Oh, uh, wow. Of the, of the video game market share. Okay. Um, compared to Nintendo, 60%. And uh, that was due to, obviously, like, Nintendo, or, like, Sega just going hard on the marketing and just making all the right moves. Sure. But it also came a little bit from the retailers not enjoying Nintendo's rules and some of the rules that Nintendo had in that makes sense. store were Now, like, did Sega... I imagine Sega knew this. Yes. But that was something yeah. they could take advantage of. Yes, no, was, they, they definitely did. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. Yeah, they definitely did, especially with the... Uh, I always love talking about this fact, but Nintendo had a very strict... Um, you can only make five games for us a year. No more, no less. You have to pay us to do that, and you have to pay us to make your cartridges. Oh wow! So okay. it's like Nintendo was like double, triple dipping, like yeah. like in order to make the rules. But because they were the only ones around, and they and they were basically printing gold, printing money. Yeah, the game is rigged, like, but it's the only game yeah. in town. Yep. And the the thing is, if you made a hit game, you were making hand over fist money, like uh, with, with Nintendo. Mm-hmm. But anyways, uh, Sega comes in. Sega pretty much goes, guys, look, like we'll take a lesser cut. You can make whatever you want. Like, I mean, there are more rules than that, but I'm being, you know, sure. generous in the explanation. But come on over. We'll take care of you, you know. And so people, a lot of people jumped ship or a lot of people made other deals with Nintendo or with, with Genesis. But Nintendo still had um, their rules regarding markdowns on their products. Nintendo, even in the early 90s, would not let 
these retailers mark down their products to get them out of the stores mm -hmm. to make room for other stuff. And so that was something that retailers hated because they needed that space, that space. to sell other things. Sure. And if you even dared to mark down your product, Nintendo would no longer supply you with stuff. Yeah, early and mid nineties, everybody tried to have a mascot. Everybody tried to take a page from from Sega's book and attack everybody. Like mm -hmm. of all the mascots that have come out, if you look at all of their magazine ads, it's always about like, you know, move over Mario or like mm -hmm. there's a there's a new crocodile in town <laughs> and stuff like you know just <laughs> just try to make it seem like you know um, like yeah there was. One of my favorite games, and it's not because it's good, it's actually pretty bad, but <laughs> I just played it when I was younger, so now it's one of my favorites, uh, was a game called Croc, and his ad, his page ad, because he was a crocodile, and that's why I use sure. that reference, his page ad was him sitting on a, a like, him sitting down and his belly's full, and it's like, you see, like, there's Sonic shoes in the background, <laughs> or, like, Mario's hat, and yeah. stuff like, and it's like, you know, the next wave of, like, cool guys, but it, it just wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. um, because that era had already, you know, that era passed. All right, so this, uh, yep, you better jump on that. Ride, ride it out. Oh, no, no more rings. Be careful. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this will protect me, right? No. <laughs> no, <it> will no. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So I can't, you gotta wait until... Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, gotta... I would usually jump up there and then wait till uh, it comes over. And yep, kind of... yep, 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 yep. Okay, well, back to the grind. Yeah, no, no, hey, you're rocking it, you're rocking it, you did, did I hit it. it? Yes, you did, you did it. Tiger Woods pump. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, is, this is 91, we're still good Tiger Woods. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, he's a... He's a kid. Old 91, yeah, <laughs> at this point. Ah, shit! Oh, uh, yeah, prepare to get dizzy. So, it, it's uh, it, it's tough to explain the objective here. Um, but just try to navigate your yeah, way. This looks like a Tim and Eric sketch almost. Uh, yeah, actually, it kind of, it kind of <laughs> Right? The universe. What a concept. <laughs> try to stay in the middle, like that area. Yeah, oh, ooh, there's the ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, is that, so, all right, well. So, I know we're playing Sonic 1, but it just sure. really good really good tidbit here, but you know, Sonic 2 is responsible for street dates on games. Street dates? Yeah, yeah. So the the date that a game oh, is supposed to be released. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So okay. for for before Sonic 2, games were kind of just released. Like nobody nobody really knew when or how or, you know, it's just when you, a store got them, yeah, you put yeah, them on the you shelf. Call. So as a consequence, like as of as of now, even to this day, we don't know exactly when like the very first Mario Brothers was released in stores. We know it was sometime in September, like between like the tenth and fifteenth, yeah. like nineteen eighty five. Mm -hmm. But or yeah, eighty five or eighty seven, whatever. Anyways, but we don't know like exactly. And as of now, that's not too big of a deal. But you know, sometimes people want to know like that exact date to well, celebrate yeah, it's, or it, whatever. It is interesting because it's it's. Mario, mm -hmm. right? It's like it's one of the biggest games of all time, one sure. of the biggest franchises of all time, and it's weird knowing, um, you know, weird not knowing a basic fact like that. You know, yeah. it'd be like if we didn't know the first day that you know Star Wars came out in '77. Yeah, it'd just be yeah. weird, you know. And I assume weird, that is that sure. is something we do know. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I'm not a history. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not an expert in Star Wars history, let, but I'm let assuming. Me, let me call him Gene. I'll yeah, ask right. <laughs> Gene. <laughs> um. <laughs> But uh, when so when they were developing Sonic 2, because they were trying to make every Sonic Sega was trying to make everything that they did a big deal for a uh -huh. good reason. You know, they wanted to drum up you know uh, sure. uh, interest in their product, and so they came up with Sonic Tuesday. And so it would be okay. the Tuesday that Sonic would come out, so the Sonic 2, and obviously it was a play on words, Sonic 2, Sonic Tuesday, whatever. Uh, but it ended up being uh, in November, uh, and it was a worldwide release one of the very first like worldwide okay. releases uh, because once again that was just something that they didn't do but they wanted it in a way that it was like everyone can celebrate playing Sonic on the same day oh, okay like, you know and so yeah because of that like we now have street dates today we have received word that Sonic 2 is already off to a very fast start Sonic 2 sell-in in Europe will exceed 1.2 million units it's been on the shelves 
in the United Kingdom for just today. And uh, they just reported a complete sellout on the phone call into us here. You got your insurance rings, there. all right? Yeah, I got 26. 26. Okay. Ooh. Oh, shit. Shit, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's nothing in there but insult to injury. <laughs> I like how I look back to the screen and Sonic's looking at me like, hey, that just gonna happened, get right? this shit together. Yeah. <laughs> One more. One more. Here we go. Uno mas. Are you getting sick of that yet? No, that's actually that. Oh, okay. That's the, that's the part I enjoy the most. That's why I keep dying. <laughs> just to give it, you could just not press start. You could just watch that ad infinitum. Sonic, you talk about developers. Sonic, uh, if I remember correctly, was made by uh, Yuji Naka and a team of, I think, two or three other people. Weren't that many of them. Um, but Sega didn't want them to put their, their credit. A lot of, actually, a lot of publishers back then um, didn't... Uh, Oh, you went up to the secret area. Yeah, I was curious. They didn't let the developers, like, put their names in the credits. I don't know why. Like, they just didn't want them to do it. And, of course, a lot of developers, because they spend a lot of time on this stuff. It's not like yeah. video games are easy to make. Would get disgruntled or aggravated, and so they would cause... Um, or they, they would, like, develop secrets into the levels or into the games to basically give themselves credit and so for the end of the sonic uh, sonic the hedgehog which i'm, I'm sorry you won't see today um, <laughs> the, the game ends with just a black screen and it doesn't do anything else so it turns out that that black screen has black text on it oh so if interesting you go in and, and flip it back you can see that it will have yuji naka's name along with all the other people who worked on the game interesting yeah unfortunately video games have a pretty uh Pretty bad track record. Pretty sordid history of how it treats the people that actually makes them. <laughs> yeah, yep, it does. Okay, here we go. The unknown. Yes. For you. Is this supposed to be a jail or a castle? It's a castle. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's like a. Okay, I think I get it. I, I, I don't. The, I you know, in any, any like games a... from like the NES, SNES, Genesis era, I don't sure. think there's any like rhyme or reason to trying to figure out where you are. Oh, damn! Right in your face, dude. Oh, you don't have no! any insurance rings. You have a continue, but I don't know where it's going to start you. Do I? I yeah. thought I already used it. Did you? You used it last time, but not this time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't know where it's going to start you. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Act three. Beginning of, uh, of the right. current level. Okay, this is it. Well, I mean, you can make a mistake. Oh, fuck. Oh. That's that's so mean. Oh, oh yeah, dude. Well, yeah, dude. Of course. They had to make... <laughs> oh no. Uh, it's like a scene in a movie when a guy steps on a mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about Sonic the Hedgehog? Um, I don't have a whole lot of historical... I mean, I don't have a whole lot of uh, context to speak with because I wasn't I wasn't playing games in the early 90s, uh, mainly because I wasn't born until 92. <laughs> so I'm not playing games till the early 2000s. Um, I do think it's interesting, the arcade influence, especially on the early industry. Uh, not only on the influence of, like how things looked but also like the design philosophy well next time i'll have a different game for you yay so i guess uh you'll be both surprised and prepared for that maybe all right i miss sight <laughs> bye everybody bye bye